Hi, my name is Dave and today I'm going to premiere show you something extremely special that we all have been waiting for more than a decade. The new Manitou Dorado. July 12, 2021. Today, the new Dorado is revealed officially to the public and the majority of us, including myself, is self-questioning. Is the new Dorado better than the old Dorado? This video is a pure tech documentary of all the steps I've done to test the new Manitou Dorado. I wanted to determine if the new Dorado is or is not better than the old Dorado. Because to me, the previous Dorado is still the fork to beat in 2021. Believe me or not, the Dorado Pro is the best fork on planet Earth. And if you try one properly set, you will never come back. In the case you feel more confident trusting those more famous editor and testers like Pink Bike ones, for instance, have you fair ups read Mike Levy's Pink Bike Dorado review? Well, if not, you better check that out because he said spot on words about the Dorado. Things like, get rolling with some proper terrain passing under you and that is when you realize that yes, something special is happening. And as much as I would like to find a fault with the Dorado, speaking strictly about the fork performance, I simply can't. With the Dorado in the front of my bike, I had more confidence than ever before and that says a lot. The reality is that this is the highest performing no-compromise DH fork available to consumers out of the box. I spent the last six months working on this project and today I'm here to share the results with you with a full detailed story of what happened as true as it is with the goods and the bads. I will take you through a quick brief of the Dorado history going through a deep tech inspection of all the Fox moving to a series of workshop bench tests and for sure this is all we want at the end a massive and huge series of practical tests. It's time to start time to discover if the perfection has been perfected. The Manitou Dorado has been in the mountain bike scene for a few decades, has the original one and only upside down fork. We have seen it for a solid 20 plus years around, but I want more practically stay focused and talk only starting from the 2010 Dorado because the 2010 is actually the initial release year of the current Dorado range. The 2010 Red Dorado was built with 36 lower tubes matched with 44 mm upper tubes and through the 10 years of service it underwent to some tech upgrades such as the IRT, the triple chamber air system, TSR caps, the air vents, big wheels compatibility and some other minor internal improvements. But I can definitely say that all the Dorados from 2010 to 2020 are basically all the same forks. The Dorado 36 it always has been available in two versions, the Pro version I have here and the Expert, featuring two different alloys, minor weight differences with two different shelf prices, one cheaper and one more expensive, but in terms of internals, both had the same parts and functionality. The Wall Dorado 36 family was built around alloy how the legs to offer a reduction in price over the original one and only Dorado 36 MRD 2009, the eye catching carbon out the legs Manitou Dorado. The Dorado 2009 was one of the best and lightest Dorado ever made so far, with a cost of nearly 3,000 euro at that time. So, if you have one, please give me a call and we'll make the deal. History has shown us that the upside down design has never been understood so much by the majority of mountain bike brands, but many to always choose upside down design for the Dorado since day one. Why is that? 
Many are the proof benefits of running inverter design and in fact all the engineers at Showa, KYB, WP, Solva, uh, Orleans, they totally switched to upside down design since the 99th-ish, that it's a long time ago. I guess many too had four thinking brains behind this choice those days and today I am extremely glad to confirm you that the new Dorado is still upside down design. I wouldn't be here if the new Dorado wasn't upside down because to me only upside down forks can be the best. End of the story. I'm sure there are dozens of sites, videos, tech documents over the internet that treats the upside down topic, clarifying that upside down is the way to go, better than conventional. So I leave those readings up to you. Please just do not restrict the search to mountain bike related sources because as said, mountain bike world seems against upside down. Ferrups not ready yet. So, please look wider and read and learn from the motocross world too. This was a quick brief about the Dorado history. Now, let's take a look at the new Dorado 2022 lineup. The Dorado 2022 comes in three versions, Comp, Expert and Pro, with two wheels option, 27 and 29, with offsets of 47 mm and flat top crown for the smallest wheel and 57 mm offset with a drop drop crown for 29er. Travel is 200 mm for both, that can be reduced to 180 internally. The 2022 Dorado 37 Comp is an all new, never seen before, coil sprung Dorado while the 2022 Expert and Pro represent the two classic Air Dorados we were used to buy, aka the more and the less expensive choices. The main big difference of this new lineup comparing to Dorado 36 is the newer lower leg diameter. 2022 Dorado is now beefed to a 37mm extension, still retaining the 44mm outer tubes. For this reason, I will call the new Dorado from now on the Dorado 37. The goal of having bigger legs is obviously to achieve more forward afterwards and torsional stiffness. Money 2 told me this new fork is about 20% stiffer overall than the 36. This seems to me a huge number and I argued miserably that there was no need of modifying the masterpiece Dorado 36 structure because she was just riding like heaven as it was, but let's see if this stiffness brings or brings not a better ride. Dorado 37 Comp and Expert are still built around alloy of the legs, it's, um, well, same as the Dorado 36, but the newest Dorado 37 Pro is now built with carbon outer legs. Exactly the same, the three grants 2009 Dorado 36 MRD, but this time for half of that price. Hydraulically speaking, Dorado 37 Comp is now on ABS dumper, while the Dorado 37 Expert come with a classic style Dorado 36 semi-open cartridge TPC Plus. And the Dorado 37 Pro, the high-end model, comes with a totally new fully sealed TPC cartridge. A couple of words for the e-bikes users. Uh, 10 years ago, e-bikes were like nothing, so still not invented. And for that reason, at that time, there was no e-bike certification rule going on for mountain bike forks and parts. Today, e-bikes are highly diffused, at least in Europe, and so paperwork must be compliant to the latest law requirement. So Dorado 37, Comp and Expert are now fully e-bike certified. Let's go in my workshop for a full tour of the internals of the new Dorado 37 Expert and Pro. You should have seen my face the first time that I unboxed the Dorado 37 and Mani 2 sent over way before today's launch date. I was grateful that Mani 2 sent over the pre-production expert unit and also glad that they sent over a couple of fully closed cartridge and the IRTs from the Pro versions and later on a production fully functional expert fork. 
Unfortunately, the carbon legs were not ready at the time of my test, so I wasn't able to test them. But at least I had all the pro internals that I can fit into an alloy legs for a more sort of complete test. Technical views between the Dorado 36 and the newest Dorado 37. On top, we have Dorado 36 complete alloy left leg and on bottom, on the screen, a Dorado 37 alloy leg. There are not many revolutionary differences between the two. You can note the 2010 uh, 36 displayed here has the brake mount detached from the dropout. You gotta know that from 2014, the Dorado 36 was equipped with a single piece lower leg dropout with integrated brake mount exactly as you've seen on the Dorado 37 left leg today. The Dorado 37 stanchions are now black handle dies, but this has nothing to do with quality. Light, gold, black, whatever, both offer the same functionality. Lower leg scars are still exactly the same on both steel plastic and seems to me interchangeable. If you are a good picker, you've noted one thing on the Dorado 37 outer legs. It has less taper from the lower clamp towards the upper clamp area compared to the Dorado 36. These contribute to improved stiffness, but if your frame is really wide, around the head tube, you may have a few degrees less of steering, no factor when you are hitting downhills at 40 km per hour. Let's move inside the air leg. Top right side, Dorado 36 air shaft assembly with expert IVA, the Pro IRT and a Pro top cap with an air cap. Bottom left side, Dorado 37 air shaft assembly, expert IVA, Pro IRT, expert top cap and air cap. Dorado 37 Pro caps will come with TSR buttons, same as the 36 Pro. Air shaft construction seems pretty similar to me, both on 10 mm. Delarine guided piston with quadring, not much of a difference here with the Dorado 36, but if you are an intuitive thinker, the 37 is 1 mm wider internally, so the negative volume is actually bigger than the 36, even if the distance between the seal head and the piston looks exactly the same on the 36. Well, we all know what means a bigger negative chamber, a softer initial bit of the travel, but I can confirm this with the bench test later in the video. Hydraulic side now. Top, the classic Dorado 36 semi-open cartridge TPC Plus and top cap. Bottom side, the new West Dorado 37 semi-open cartridge TPC Plus and top cap. Both cartridges are twin tube still, aka TTX, if you are more used to recognize a more diffuse commercial name. One thing new in the Dorado 37 lineup is the newest cartridge that comes with the Pro version. That's a true fully sealed cartridge. This is also a twin tube cartridge, but because it's a fully sealed, there is a need of a volume expansion compensator and many two engineers choose to not use the typical rubber bladder like Meser, RockShock, Fox FIT and others. Instead, they drew and create a precise internal floating piston, spring-backed. The design is more motor style, more solid, more precise. And actually, it allows the finest tuners to have more fun and results when start tweaking things. You can see the little hole in the middle of the outer tube, and this is the overpressure bleed port. In case of an overpressure, it will be discharged by this port, preventing the blowing up of the damper. Both the TPC Plus dampers, Expert and Pro versions, features the mighty HP hole hydraulic bottom mount system that engages in the last three centimeters of travel giving you an endless travel feeling. While the Dorado 36, it was engaging a wee earlier in the travel at minus five centimeters from the end of the stroke. I'll give a run with both the cartridges on the dyno to check how they perform later in the video. Let's check now the crowns. Dorado 36 Pro right, Dorado 37 Expert left. Same style externally, but the Dorado 37 lower crown is not machined hollow internally like the Dorado 36 was. Also, the Expert 37 comes in a bad black and the Pro 37 comes this year in a super eye-catching polish raw alloy finish. While Dorado 36, Expert and Pro were both black matte gloss. 
Weight-wise, the new crowns are just about the same as the 36 Dorado ones, but main visible difference is the lower crown design. Draw an imaginary line from the crown race seat on both and measure the distance from this line to the lowest point of the clumps. You can see clearly how the Dorado 37 has much lower position of the two lower clamps. This means the outer legs are now clamped much closer towards the axle, or in other words, they are more far from the head tube. This will give to the fork a bit of extra stiffness for sure. Let's talk about complete fork weight. Dorado 37 Pro practically maintain the weight of the old Dorado 36 Pro, but gain a 20% increased stiffness. The Dorado 37 alloy instead gains a bit of grams over the old Dorado 36 alloy, but it also gains the 20% figure stiffness. I'll figure out in the right test how the Dorado 37 20% increased stiffness feels and if or not the alloy version extra weight is felt when riding. Before I go practical, I wanted to put the forks in my machines to read some numbers on the damping in the R side of. So let's see the values that came out from the test. To test the damping, I utilize the crank dyno as usual. This thing gives me numbers, not opinions. He's blind, he doesn't think alone, he doesn't like or fall in love Dorados like me, he doesn't sympathize for uh, orange forks. Let's start testing for the up 10th time a Dorado 36. I have been doing it for 12 years already, but one more time today. Once I got the ratings, I fed my Dino Zaros with the newest Dorado 37 semi-open dumper first and closed cartridge after. Dorado 37 cartridges are both pretty similar on Dorado 36, but the 37 lineup has a few more newtons on the high-speed compression and a bit less on the low speeds. The 37 dumpers are not actually night and day compared to the Dorado 36 ones because Dorado 36 damping was already spectacular and this new Dorado 37 actually retains that characteristics. I did also not read a huge difference between the newest closed cartridge of the Pro and the semi-open version of the Expert, both performing pretty well. But the big difference between the closed cartridge and a semi-open cartridge is that with the sealed cartridge we can run the thicker mechanical right oil for the right leg to lubricate the bushings. Instead using the thinner damping oil as used in the semi-open cartridge forks. So, closed dumpers are by definition better products. The second thing to test on the machine is the air or coil spring progression. 37 has bigger volumes than the 36. I expected lower overall pressure compared to the state of the art. Dorado 36 uh, air system. Look at this curve. This is the best air fork on the market. Not for nothing, this system and the IRT were copied by many. I spring dyno tested the Dorado 36 Pro with IRT and then the Dorado 37 Expert with IVA and the Pro with IRT. I can definitely say the curve of Dorado 37 with IRT at slow compression speed is basically the same as the Dorado 36 with IRT, even if volume seems different. The IVA plot is similar to the IRT plot, but there is a bit less suppler at the beginning of the stroke, which is not always a bad thing because some riders doesn't like a too soft fork at the beginning of the stroke because they report sometimes they can't transfer the body weight onto grip when the fork is too soft. No big improvements here seen on the 37 over the 36 and you know why? Because the Dorado 36 with IRT was already the state of the art. To me, no room of improvement, period. Let's go through a couple of more deep concepts about air systems. The bigger are the chambers, the less the pressure is required to hold your weight up because the piston pushes more pressure by its bigger surface area. This means also the seals will be less squeezed 
onto the chamber walls, reducing the, the frictions, augmenting suppleness and sensitivity of the fork. The bigger are the chambers, the less pronounced will be the adiabatic compression pressure increase for the high-speed compression events. In practical words, this means that the bigger are the chambers of the fork and the less the pressure we put in them, the less variable the air curve will be no matter the velocity at which we compress the forks. Now time to move to the riding phase, which is just uh, coming big and now. For the practical test, I wanted to focus the majority of the work for what the Dorado is built for, going fast downhill against a stopwatch. After this, I want also to test how it performs on a 118mm travel enduro e-bike. At the time of my Dorado 37 downhill test, all the bike parks were closed in Europe because it was winter time. Gotta mention that the freaky Covid age was also active those months with these lockdowns, with all the bull blah blah blah, whatever. So it was difficult to move around, but luckily Finale Ligre is my backyard and even if Finale is not univocally recognized as a pure downhill trail area, there are a couple of DH trucks with some nasty features which served well for my job. In fact, many World Cup teams and athletes appear there during the pre-season to test their suspension. One of the tracks is called Pino Morto, aka Legnaia, a short but effective track full of rocks everywhere, less than a K long, so definitely on a shortish side, but it's really good to file many consecutive runs in a day. There is only one feature missed in Finale Ligure, I have to, to be sincere with you, and not jumps, big jumps. But I recently seen the Dorado 37 flying over the African skies at the Darkfest on Clemens Claudela's bikes, who was sending 100 feet massive jumps on the Dorado. So if the Dorado was enough for him, I doubt it will be not enough for you. Let's see how I set up the technical details before going practical. These two legendary rigs were just built exactly the same. The reason behind having two bikes for the test is because this allowed me to jump from one bike to the other on the fly on the same day between the runs. Both the Dorados were set exactly the same starting from the chassis, both on alloy other tubes. And semi-open cartridge with the IRT on the air side. Also, I've set the damper equally using the crank dyno and I set the air progression equally using the spring dyno too. There is actually one difference between the two forks here and it's the offset. Dorado 36 is on 49 natively, while the 37 there, 29, is on 57. I like short offsets, so I am fine with the Dorado 36, which is on 49, but the Dorado 3729 on 57 is actually way too long and different to be compared to the 49 of the Dorado 36. So I had to use the Dorado 27.5 crowns, which transformed the 57 onto a 47 offset fork. But unfortunately, this did not work it out of the box because the top crown of the 27.5 Dorado is flat and there is no way because the 29 Legend has a moderate to long head tube. So I got machine CNC a custom top drop crown with 47 millimeter, which I have here. Now I have a fully working Dorado 37 on 29, 47 millimeters off it, and a Dorado 36 on this side, 29 modified with 49 millimeters offset. I don't really think that two millimeters of difference would be a noticeable variable which can compromise this test. To dynamically study the behavior of the two forks when riding, I had to monitor some runs with objective numbers rather than subjective feelings. 
both bikes were equipped uh, for a good bunch of runs with the, the AM EVO 4S data acquisition system. Nothing was left at the case anyway, because I also set up a proper digital lap timer system which, with start and finish gates on the track to get precise run timings. And I also monitor the heart rate for the rider to cross compare data with the effort put in each run. Personally, I've done 40 runs in total, swapping the bikes, all with stable, drive and fast conditions. And these are the best three results I got Dorado 36 1 minute 48 57 Dorado 37 1 minute 49 30 second Dorado 37 1 50 03 I was faster on the Dorado 36 yes the old Dorado this looked really weird to me I definitely want to comment these results during the first run ever with the new Dorado 37, I immediately felt after 100 meters that the fork was different than the old Dorado. The 37 was stiffer. I don't want to say this was better, I just want to say it was different. I tried to push hard, run after run, tried to go as fast as I could, but with the 37, I always made some little mistakes, probably because I was going a little faster, but that made me come second overall behind the Dorado 36, which I was riding more consistently. The Dorado 37 was definitely tracking the off cumbers and rooty corners better. I did about 40 runs, and lap times were all grouped within one second. So I wanted to do more tests, changing an important variable, the pilot. I engaged a pro racer I can trust pretty well, one of the fastest 10 in, in Italy. Let's see some of his real speed. <laughs> His name is Fabio, 23 years old. We have seen it in some other video like Local Row 1, Voglio Un Panino. He rides for hot bikes transition, but this time he was kind to jump on totally new rig for him, the legend. Fabio is one of the fastest riders ever on that trail. He really knows every inch of the track, plus he knows how to go really fast there race speed nearly like world cup level guys i hope he would use the extra stiffness of the dorado 37 chassis Fabio did a lot of runs with the two bikes, trail condition remained stable for all the tests, dry and fast, and these are the results achieved. First place Dorado 37 with 1 minute 35 and 14. Second Dorado 37 again, 1 minute 35 and 30. Third place Dorado 36, 1 minute 35 and 43. Yeah, Dorado 37 first place this time. Analyzing the data required, I have nothing strange to report from Fabio's run with both the Fox suspensions acquisition, GoPro videos, heart race, and so on. Everything nearly identical. What about Fabio's comments after the runs? Fabio was initially not really happy of the 37. He reported that the new fog was sort of less supple, more stiff, less enjoyable overall. 
yeah, you should have seen my face here in that stuff, like, what the f***? Then he started to go faster and faster, run after run, because the fork was actually passing him more confidence and confidence. So his comments changed from the 36 is better to the 37, it's a race fork and I can go faster with this fork. My face started to smile. Yeah, hearing that stuff. On our final brief, he admitted the new Dorado seems the more composed race style stiff fork that suits better charging riders to get a podium. We also agreed that the 36 is still a great performing fork for the majority of the people, especially if you take it easy, go slower, or yeah, whatever. I want to add some personal consideration to the test we have been executing until now. Myself and Fabio are pretty light riders. I'm 67 kilograms, while Fabio is about 71, and both our lap times were grouped within sort of half a second slash second between the 36 and the 37 Dorado. But what about heavy riders? Would the heavy rider benefit more from the 20% stiffness figure of the Dorado 37? What about heavy bikes, e-bikes? I know a guy. Well, he's a gentleman. He's well over 50. His name is Angelo, known around by his nickname Chilo, comes from the motor world Enduro. And he was a racer, but he was stopped by a pretty bad accident during a time stage in a race. So he started to do some con rides out on the weekends with e-bikes for, for pleasure. That thing lasts one weekend. Because as soon as he hit again the handlebar, he, he, his brain turned automatically on the race behavior. I met him because he arrived at mine arguing against wobbly single crown forks and crappy air shocks. So I gave him a custom Dorado RRT 36 and a double barrel coil shock. He worked as a test pilot in the motor world and is pretty consistent in riding. Consistency when testing is one of the most important qualities. For the test on his bike, I had to get rid of his custom RRT Dorado and I installed the stock Dorado 36 used here on the Legend 4DH as well the other one, the Dorado 37. Later, we discussed which trail we could have take for the test and both came up to the pacific conclusion that Pino Morto Legnaia truck couldn't represent the right trail for enduro e-bike we moved uh, up the famous NATO base or, uh, on top of Final Rigore and picked up the most rooty trail we know up there, the base trail. Both the forks were set identically to 180 mm of travel, dyno test for air spring equal settings, as well dyno test for equal damping settings. Chilo started with the Dorado 36 doing a dozen of runs and once the timings were not improving anymore, let's say all group within one second, we choose to give it a go with the new Dorado 37. When he arrived back at the van, I saw his smile inside the helmet and I read on the lap timer display four seconds faster on his first ever run with the Dorado 37. That was crazy. Chilo was really happy, but immediately went off for another run nearly without talking to me. He came back from a second run and boom, seven seconds faster on his second run on the Dorado 37. One more run and Chilo came back to me telling me, Dave, 
we gotta stop this test we can continue there is no need of do any more run with this fork this fork is like my motocross five grand solva 49 fork this fork inspired me so much confidence on off cumber sections rules everywhere that i can overall go faster everywhere without thinking what's in front and beneath my front wheel period yeah <laughs> i was happy to hear those words let's see now the three best chilos lap times First place, Dorado, 37, 3 minutes, 27, 55. Second place, 37 again, 3 minutes, 30 and 0, 3. And third place, Dorado, 36, 3 minutes, 34, 15. A big gap from the 37 and a 36 here. I want to report to you some of the Chilos Dorado 37 after round best comments because those words just say it all. It's like if someone removed the rocks from the trail, the trail now is like a tarmac road. You feel something so massive in the front and you just want to accelerate and go faster everywhere. Next run, I will go so fast that I will kill myself if we don't stop this test. Well, that was a really cool day and those words really made me smile. Myself, Fabio, Chilo, for us, practical tests were done. Now it's time to discuss the final consideration of these intense months of work. Is the new Dorado better than the old Dorado? Is the new Dorado faster than the old Dorado? This is hard to say. And, uh, and declare, because improving the perfection is something really hard to achieve and or attempting that may be really difficult, if not impossible. What means a better fork for you? You want something lighter, you want something slimmer, something stiffer, something cheaper, something that tracks the ground better or something that's move out all the rooty and rocks everything in front of you when you go ride. Well, any of us has his personal way of evaluating things and his personal technical wishes for his suspensions. My way of evaluating a suspension is the mix of the results I get when I test with my machines and, and test with my feelings when I go riding. With this new Dorado fork, both the tests, both the things were positive. So the objective results and the subjective results were both good. Many to accomplish the challenge. Yes, in some terms they did. To me, the new Dorado is better than the old Dorado. The new Dorado isn't night and day compared to the old Dorado because, as said, the old Dorado was and is still a masterpiece. But the new one gained some features retaining the magic behavior of the old Dorado. First of all, the improved tracking on corners um, due to the extra stiffness, the 20% we've seen. Second, the fully closed cartridge for sure. And also, I would say, the fact that this is a full native 29 by 200 while the old one wasn't. So, is the new Dorado making us faster than the old Dorado? Well, it seemed that all three of us were actually faster on the new Dorado. Even if myself did some mistakes when riding and, and those delayed my timings. My opinion is that the new Dorado is, um, is even more than before a race for. Should I replace my current Dorado 36 and buy the new Dorado 37? In my opinion, all depends on, uh, on how fast you want to go and how heavy are you. Dorado 36 is, is, is the perfection. So you should not bin it, you should not think that your Dorado 36 now is not good anymore. But at the same time, the newer 37 is a, 
perfection perfected. From what I have seen, the heavier is the bike or the heavier is the rider or the combo, the better the 20% more stiffness will help out. So to reply to my question, should I replace the 36 and get the 37, I would say yes. Get the new one if you are on the heavy side. And uh, yes, get the new one if you, if you ride e-bikes. And uh, another yes, uh, get the new one if you are a racer and want to go faster and faster. So at the end of the story, I think this is all for now. Yeah, to me, case is closed. This was the real story of the big work done in the last six months to test for you the new Dorado and the old and bring the truth about the new Dorado 37 to you. I really hope you appreciate my big effort I put in all this. Thanks for watching and uh, I tell you what, we'll meet in the bike park. Myself with the Dorado and uh, yourself with a Dorado. Music